Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Now in the last video, I did my response to a video that suggested that you shouldn't use Unity. In there, I respond to each argument one by one by clarifying a lot of misconceptions. Definitely go watch that one if you haven't seen it. And in there, I also mentioned that I would make another video with some valid things that I think Unity couldn't improve, so this is it. That other video was already pretty long, so I didn't want to make it super long or have to cut down on this one, so that's why I made them separate. And actually, because of that last video, in the end, I will also mention two bonus things that I saw in the comments from that video. Alright, so here are seven valid issues with Unity that I'd like to see them improve. Starting off with a really simple one, the version names. I think the way they have the three version types makes perfect sense, that being the preview, tech and LTS. However, the part that I think they should change is just increase the year by one. Right now, we are in 2021, however, the recommended version is the LTS version, which is version 2020. Naturally, that might lead people to think that the LTS version is already outdated and that version 2021 is the current version, so I think what they should do is just increase by one. So nowadays in 2021, we should be using the 2021 LTS and the preview version should instead be 2022. That would make it much more clear that the tech and preview versions are the future and not the ones that you should be using in the current year. Again, all I'm talking about is just a name change alone. Keep how they work exactly the same, the same categories, just increase the number by one. I think that one tiny change alone would greatly help in avoiding any potential version confusion. The next thing that I think they should improve is something that actually they have already improved in these past two years, but I thought I should mention it. That being, just don't highlight preview or experimental things as much. Usually during the Unity keynotes, it's all about highlighting exciting things in the future, and while it's great to hear about exciting new things coming up in the future, it does lead to people saying the engine is in constant preview, which really just isn't true. That one is just a false perception caused by talking more about the future than what currently exists right now. Pretty much no one gets excited about hearing about normal 2D objects or basic 2D lights or regular animations, even though those quote unquote basic tools really they're more than enough to allow games like Hollow Knight and Valheim to exist. Now for me, I love hearing about future things and where the engine is headed, but I can see how it does lead to a lot of people seeing the engine in a negative way. If you're constantly only talking about things that are in preview, that leads to people thinking that that's all there is. But like I said, this one has already been massively improved in the past two years. In 2019, the Unite talks were all about tons of preview packages and tools. But since then, Unity has definitely focused more on highlighting things that are already out and verified, and I think that's a very good thing. Although these past few years were also very different because of the whole worldwide thing, but hopefully it was intentional, so next year, when hopefully the next Unite conference happens, hopefully they will continue doing that and not overly highlight preview packages. Another thing that I think they should improve is in communicating all of the things that they already do. There's tons of super useful tools and features that they have already built, but you probably don't know about. Specifically, there's a bunch of them that only exist as GitHub projects, and if you don't know about them, then you pretty much will never find them. For example, the NevMesh, what comes with Unity is a great starting point, but also has tons of limitations. It's why I recommend the A-Star Pathfinding project so much. It's extremely adaptable and very performant, much more capable than the standard NevMesh. But did you also know that Unity also has a NevMesh extras project on GitHub adding tons more features? Chances are you didn't know about that. There's also a 2D extras package with tons more useful functionality for any 2D games. There's a ton of samples, including complete projects like the multiplayer FPS sample or the boat attack demo. The issue is most people won't bother to browse their GitHub, which is massive and full of interesting things, so most people just don't know that all of this exists. Another one that is a very well-built and very useful tool is the photo mode. It's really excellent and something that nowadays players love, so adding it to your game will be a great plus. But again, almost no one knows about it. There's no mention of it in the engine at all. There was just one blog post and one video on the official channel and that's it. So if you miss those, then you have no idea that this exists. Yet another excellent one is the Star Assets. You have two controllers, one in first person and one in third person. Both are excellently well made. I showcased them in a video and even used the third person asset as a base for my third person shooter. If you don't browse the asset store, then chances are you have no idea that those excellent Unity made assets exist. Same thing for all of the other assets on the store, there's lots of awesome stuff, all of it is free, and chances are most people don't know about it. So yeah, I would say they definitely need to find some way of showing all those things to people using the engine. Maybe add another tab on Unity Hub, or maybe a splash screen when you open the engine, showing a random selection of those projects. So I'm not entirely sure on the solution, but I think they definitely should surface those projects a lot more. 
And up next, something that has been a pretty big negative for Unity for quite a while is just no native multiplayer support. There's always been a bunch of tools you can use, which is great, but the engine itself should definitely support natively. And again, this one is also something they are actively solving. They acquired the ML API a couple of months ago, and they're working on it under the new name Netcode for Game Objects. It's still in preview, or rather in pre-release. So while this one is not yet production ready, it does seem like this issue should hopefully be solved in the coming months. When it does, I'll definitely be covering it in the video. I haven't touched Unity networking since they deprecated UNet all those years ago. And speaking of that, one pretty bad thing they did in the past was essentially deprecating or seizing support for something before a newer tool was available. For example, like I said, networking, the official unit stopped being supported many, many years ago, and only now are we finally seeing an official multiplayer tool with the ML API. Another example was the render pipelines. I think introducing URP and AGRP is a very good thing, but pushing those so hard before they were at parity with the built-in render pipeline, doing that, I think that wasn't good. So that's another issue, but thankfully this one seems to have been mostly solved as of recently, so I hope they keep doing it this way. For example, the new input system is awesome and better than the legacy input manager in every way, but it's also not being forced upon you. You are still welcome to use the old input manager, and one thing that I love is that you can actually use both at once. So this one is great, definitely give people more options instead of taking things before providing a suitable replacement. Then something which is or isn't an issue depending on how you look at it, it's how ECS has been taking ages. I say it is or isn't an issue just because I understand engineering is hard, it's very difficult to predict what issues may occur, especially with such a massive architecture shift. So personally, I do understand that ECS is more complex than initially expected, and I understand that it's taking longer than usual. But at the same time, I also understand how people can be upset with that, since three years ago all the talks were about how ECS is the future and it's so much better in so many scenarios, and yet here we are three years later and it's not yet ready for production. So I can see both sides on that issue. Personally, I really like how the future of Unity looks like, but I'm also very happy with the current game object workflow, so while I'm excited for what the future might bring, I'm also okay with waiting for it. So with regards to this one, I would say more communication, but again, I can also see how that's difficult if they have no idea when it might be done. Either way, hopefully next year there will be some new information. The last public ECS build was over one year ago. Also, by the way, over here, let me clarify one important misconception that a lot of people get wrong. There's a difference between DOTS and ECS. I hear a lot of people complain that DOTS is still in preview, which just isn't accurate. DOTS is composed of the Entity Component System, or ECS, the Burst Compiler, and the Job System. Of those three, the only one still in preview is ECS. The Burst Compiler and the Job System have been stable and verified for quite a while. So keep in mind whenever you hear someone say that DOTS is stuck in preview, that's just not true. ECS is in preview, but the Job System and Burst, those are already done. And actually, on that note, here's a quick news flash that just happened literally as I was editing this video. There's an update on the ECS package, the huge upgrade to version 0.5 is coming out early next year, and then version 1.0 is planned for the 22 LTS cycle. So just like I hoped, it seems there will be lots of exciting developments related to ECS next year. The next issue is how there should be some more clarity for how features relate to one another. For example, I've seen people talk about how they don't know whether they should use the VFX graph or the particle system whether they should use the input manager or the input system, whether ECS will replace game objects, text versus text mesh pro, Unity UI versus UI elements, whether URP and AGRP replace the built-in render pipeline or not, should you use Unity Collaborate or Plastic SM? There's a lot of confusion about a lot of those things. Now, some of those are upgrades, some are side grades, and some really aren't related at all. Now, I'm not sure exactly how or where they could clarify the relationship between these tools, but there certainly is a lot of confusion on it. There's even a popular meme about it in the Unity subreddit, and all the comments agree that this is definitely an issue. So while I'm here, let me answer these ones. For the VFX graph and the particle system, these are essentially side grades. The VFX graph runs on the GPU, and the particle system runs on the CPU. So the VFX graph is great for massive amounts of particles, but the particle system is still better for doing things related to collisions. Then for the input manager and input system, the input system is pretty much a full-on upgrade, although the input manager is not being deprecated. The input system does everything the input manager can do, but do it better. 
But again, if your game is using the Legacy Input Manager, then you don't have to worry, it won't be removed. Next up, whether ECS will replace game objects. I saw this confusion quite a lot back when Unity was constantly talking about dots. Like I said, first of all, remember dots is not ECS. So on that, the burst compiler and the job system have nothing to do with game objects. They work with any kind of object or data. But then ECS also has nothing to do with game objects. It is not an upgrade or even a side grade. It's just another way of working that might or might not be suitable for whatever project you're currently trying to solve. So on this one, nope, game objects are not going to be deprecated and ECS is not a replacement for it. Then on text versus text mesh pro, this one is a straight upgrade. Nowadays text pretty much only exists for legacy reasons. It's just there so your old projects don't break on new versions. But Text Mesh Pro is better in every single way and it's what you should be using. It should replace both the world text mesh as well as the legacy UI text. Then on Unity UI versus UI elements, this one is a tricky one. I haven't quite kept up to date with the development of UI elements. This one is sort of a side grade, it's a different way of building your UI. But also from what I know, Unity is working hard to make it a better way of building your UI, so in the future this might become a straight upgrade to Unity UI. But again, Unity UI is not being deprecated, so keep using that without fear. Then whether URP and AGRP replace the render pipeline. For a while, URP and AGRP were missing quite a lot of features, but by now I believe they have achieved parity. So nowadays, unless you have a very specific reason to use the legacy built-in render pipeline, nowadays, yep, you should be using either URP or AGRP. It should be a straight upgrade. And finally, on Unity Collaborate versus Plastic SEM, I'm really not very familiar with these two, so I'm not sure how they relate. They bought Plastic SEM after Unity Collaborate already existed, so maybe as of right now they are side grades, but maybe in the future one of those two may come out on top. Again, I'm not too familiar, so not entirely sure on this one. So yes, all of these tools and how they relate to each other, that can definitely be very confusing. Personally, I know all of this because it's my job to keep track of all of it, but for the average user, yep, definitely very confusing. So I think this one is a potentially very big issue, but honestly, I'm not too sure how to fix it. Maybe when you add a particle system or a VFX graph component, maybe there's a quick message explaining the difference. I'm really not sure, but this one is definitely an issue and hopefully they won't find a good solution. Okay, so for the two bonus things that I saw mentioned in the previous video's comments, first one is on the asset store and render pipelines. I would say don't highlight assets that don't work with the new render pipelines. The asset store has been around for a very long time, so naturally there's tons of really awesome stuff that came out before the render pipelines were a thing. And for most of those that's actually not an issue, since the render pipelines have that built-in automatic converter. However, there are quite a lot of assets that use custom shaders, and for those there's no automatic conversion process. So either you convert them yourself if you're a shader programmer, or you really can't use them. Now, my suggestion isn't that they should remove those assets. I would say keep them there, but don't highlight them if they don't automatically work with the new render pipelines. For example, a while ago, there were a bunch of Unity Mega Bundles. Those are always great, heavy discount on tons of assets, but a lot of the assets included in those bundles are very old, and I remember quite a lot of frustration at seeing some assets that look really great, but then seeing URPs not supported. For example, I was just this week looking for a really nice environment for an upcoming video, I browsed my assets and saw this really awesome pack that I picked up in one of those bundles. And upon opening it, I saw that the asset uses a bunch of custom shaders which were not automatically upgraded. So even though the asset looks really awesome in the videos and screenshots, sadly I cannot use it. So yes, I would say keep those assets on the store, but when choosing which ones to highlight in future sales or bundles, make sure you only highlight things that support the render pipelines. And for the second bonus point that I saw mentioned in the comments, it is simply hide the old legacy features by default. For example, Text Mesh Pro is better than the legacy text mesh and the UI text in every way. So because of that, there's really no reason to have them waste space on that context menu. It's great that the engine keeps supporting legacy features, so I don't want them removed, but they should definitely be hidden by default just to avoid some confusion. Just make it exactly like the preview packages on the package manager. Add some sort of setting in the preferences where you must enable if you want to see the legacy text mesh or the legacy UI text. And perhaps even the same thing for the legacy animation component and the legacy animation system. So keep those features, but hide them by default. Alright, so those are a bunch of things that I think are valid issues that they could improve, and some other things that they've already improved and I hope they keep it up in the future. Now, just in case someone from Unity ends up seeing this video, go ahead and post in the comments what issues you have with the engine and how you think they could improve it. 
but also do make sure you watch my previous video so you don't end up mentioning one of the non-issues that I talked about in there. Either way, the future looks bright, so I hope Unity keeps getting better and better. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.